Hello and welcome to this week's online worship here at Orwell and Port Moak Church on the shores of lovely Loch Leven. It's interesting in Loch Leven Castle on an island in the Loch, Mary Queen of Scots had her own experience of lockdown, spending several months there as a prisoner in 1567 to 1568 before she managed to escape. So lockdown, the message is, has an ending. And uh, I'm sure we're all encouraged by the steps now being taken, small enough as they are, uh, towards that happy goal. Meantime, I hope that you and uh, all who are dear to you are, are bearing up well and coping with all the inconveniences. Uh, we've been blessed with remarkable weather during these weeks, and many have remarked just how much that's helped to lift their spirits. Today in the church calendar is uh, Pentecost Sunday, marking the descent of the Holy Spirit from the risen and ascended Jesus. A psalm that reminds us of the Spirit's ability to bring transformation and renewal in our world and in our lives is Psalm 104. And as we come to worship, let's listen to these verses from this psalm. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you form to frolic there, these all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did the The hour I first believed 
Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, it is with gladness that we come into your presence, bringing to you the worship of humble, grateful hearts. We thank you, creator and sustainer of all things, for every good and perfect gift, for the countless blessings we experience daily in our lives, for your goodness and mercy that have followed us all our days. Generous giver, above all, we praise you for the incomparable gift of your love in sending us your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today, with joy and gratitude, we remember the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost on those who were gathered, dispelling their fears, clearing their vision, uniting them as one, equipping them for mission. In challenging and uncertain days, when many feel isolated and afraid, May the same Spirit of Pentecost, who anointed Jesus without measure to accomplish all your purpose, breathe into each of us now new life, comfort and peace. May we be energised to live more faithfully as members of your coming Kingdom and as joyful witnesses to the good news. We praise you that the Spirit came at Pentecost not for a fleeting visit, but to stay with us forever that his presence with us underwrites the promise that one day, in a renewed world of love and justice, all will worship its rightful Lord, your Son, our Saviour, and that everything defiled and broken by human pride and folly will be perfectly put to rights. God of mercy and grace, we remember that when the Spirit came at Pentecost, not all were glad. There were some who mocked the Spirit-filled disciples. Forgive us when we close our minds and hearts to your Spirit at work. Forgive us when we refuse to acknowledge the Spirit's action in others and in situations out with our own comfort zones. Forgive us when we choose darkness over light and stunt the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Forgive us when we choose safe and comfortable paths in place of the sometimes risky, even dangerous routes of service and mission to which the Spirit directs us. Cleanse our hearts by your Spirit, Lord, and fill us anew, that we may be bold and humble servants to a world in so much need of the just and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13 When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. 
When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bride's groom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice one wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your living word. May it be a lamp to our feet and a light on our path as together we travel through challenging days. Amen. Weddings have been much on my mind this week. Two couples intending to marry soon and at whose uh, wedding it would have been my privilege to officiate have been in touch to rearrange the dates. If it were not for lockdown, uh, we would have been gathered with family and friends this very weekend to celebrate our son and future daughter-in-law's wedding. Again, uh, their gathering of loved ones has had to be put on hold. There were no government interventions or even social distancing, of course, at the wedding we heard about in the reading from John. And today, with Christians around the world, we mark and celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit from the risen and ascended Jesus, just as he had promised his followers. So, one of our readings was about a wedding that Jesus attended early in his ministry, and the other reading was about what took place on the day of Pentecost, soon after his ascension. What has Cana to do with Pentecost, you might well ask. Well, let's at least attempt to look at Pentecost through the lens of a wedding in rural Cana of Galilee and in light of our own postponed marriages. Let me read a couple of verses from that narrative in John. First verse three. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, to Jesus that is, they have no more wine. And then the words of the master of the banquet uh, to the bridegroom in verse 10. Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have had much to drink. But you've kept the best wine until now. The previous chapter tells how 
God himself, in breathtaking humility, came among us in the child of Bethlehem, full of grace and truth. And we saw his glory, said John. We caught a sight of his true identity and wonder. The eternal God enfleshed as a helpless infant for the salvation of the world. To get new creation underway, we saw his glory. Now here's the thing as we turn into chapter 2. Where did this earth-shaking, life-changing moment of epiphany occur for these disciples? Well, it was at a rustic wedding in the backwoods of Galilee, in the most ordinary of human and social situations. I suspect the unknown couple would have blushed if they'd been told that millennia later we'd still be talking excitedly about their wedding day. An ordinary occasion, yes, but extraordinary too, for Jesus was there. He loved and, and loves to be in the very ordinary day-to-day -day events in our lives. He was human in the fullest sense, and nothing ever remains ordinary when he is there. So what made the penny drop, at least in part, uh, so that John can finish his account of this wedding reception by saying, this, the first of his signs, or cues as to his true identity, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. It's the first of a series of signposts uh, to point us to the truth about Jesus. Well, in turn, John supplies us with some parallel clues as to what was going on. These signs of Jesus were moments when heaven and earth intersected in powerful ways. That is, when Jesus is present, a new dimension of reality comes into play. The Bible, you know, is essentially a wedding narrative. Many people think the Bible is at core a book of religious rules or moral precepts to be followed. No, it's at heart a love story. It begins with a wedding in a garden. It ends with a wedding in a city. The ultimate wedding of Jesus Christ and all who love him, the marriage of the Lamb and his bride. When you and I attend a wedding, God has so designed things that we are getting a preview, a snapshot in advance of the ultimate wedding day that's still to come. And the complementarity of groom and bride in God's plan is a key element of that. Pointing to the day when all who love Jesus are with him and are joyfully in his immediate company forever. An eternal marriage of endless delight. And this is the great meta-narrative, if you like, of the Bible. And of, of it, every so-called ordinary marriage is a preview. So back to Cana. There's a sudden panic at the reception. The wine has just run out, and there are hours to go. It's not just a massive inconvenience, but a social disgrace. Of course, weddings rarely go perfectly smoothly. In my own 40 years of conducting them, I've seen the bride arrive 45 minutes late. A count hadn't been taken of rugby match traffic. Uh, on one occasion, the marriage schedule had been left behind. On another occasion, the bride signed her married name, which landed me in piping hot water with the formidable registrar. But here in Cana, there's a real problem, and Mary, Jesus' mother, knows exactly what to do. She tells Jesus. That's wise. But did you notice what he said? Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Here again is one of John's little clues dropped in for us. When John speaks of the hour he means the hour of jesus coming death on the cross and resurrection from the dead on the third day and the coming of the holy spirit at pentecost the hour is the time that revolution 
began, the sweeping in of God's new creation and the beginning of the wedding music of the big coming day. Pentecost was about the Holy Spirit coming here from the now risen and ascended Jesus to get this whole glorious revolution underway in all the world. So Jesus is saying to his mother, it's not yet time for my wedding music to start. There's no coronavirus, but there's going to be a delay. Still, here's a sign, here's a clue of what I've come into this world to accomplish. Here's a little sampler of the future. Now, there were six huge jars standing there uh, used for ceremonial cleansing. Outward washing was a big thing for the Jews throughout the Old Testament period. God's good world had been spoiled by humans turning foolishly from God to their own way. They became defiled. Sin is the name for this. The little word with I at the center, pushing God to the margins, enthroning self in his place. And all this ritual washing uh, spoke of the defilement of the human heart. And it pointed to a future where there will be, as it were, one great final washing of all creation. And that has everything to do with the spirit of Pentecost. Jesus tells the attendants to fill these enormous stone jars with water and directs them to take some of the content to the master of ceremonies. Lo and behold, amazingly, the water has become wine, a whole 180 gallons of it. The water met its master and blushed, wrote the young Lord Byron. The MC was blown away. Wine of this quality, it's not served at this time in the day. It's served at the start of the evening. You know how it is. Chianti, Gallonero, Reserva, to start off, and Aldi's basic plonk for later when, well, the guests aren't quite so fussy. You've done the opposite, he says. You've kept the best wine until now. What's all this about? On one level, of course, Jesus graciously coming to the rescue of an acutely embarrassed young couple, turning a disastrous situation into one of relief and joy. On another level, these 180 gallons of best vintage point to a deeper reality, the reality that in Jesus himself lies this true solution to the dreadful human predicament of sin and its consequences. His hour is coming. He will shed his blood, crimson as the wine in Cana's stone jars for the sins of the world, and then rise on the third day. It will be the beginning of new creation, the first notes of the enthralling wedding music of the Lamb and his bride. And at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes to get the whole wedding procession, as it were, underway. Jesus' followers, filled with the new wine of the Spirit, a new heart and spirit given them, as Ezekiel had promised, and a community of the Spirit is formed. Our Christian faith is not at last about trying to be good, and to keep our nose as clean as possible. It's about a completely new start through believing in Jesus, our becoming part of God's amazing project of new creation. It's about becoming new people in Christ, animated by the resurrection life of the living Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, reaching out in love to others, in witness and service and compassion, and note well, it's about true joy. In scripture, wine is often joy's symbol. The joy of the Lord, which as C.S. Lewis says, is the serious business of heaven. The disciples, do you recall, were so filled with joy on that first Pentecost that the onlookers thought they were quite tipsy. 
Peter blurted something to the effect, come on, give us a break. Uh, the, the pubs are closed. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Written in bold letters over so much of our society and culture today are Mary's words in Cana. They have no wine. Anger and blame sometimes seem just now the order of the day. And more broadly, real joy has been replaced by its inadequate and frankly pathetic substitutes. What are we to do? Well, at Cana we're being shown a preview of the greatest wedding of them all. Today I'm looking forward to the postponed weddings of family, members and friends. When God willing we shall come together in celebration and my word, are we going to celebrate? And these marriages will be fresh signs of what is still to come when Jesus steps back into his own world to end forever every cursed thing that spoils and defiles it and to get the greatest wedding celebrations of all underway. And it all came into focus for John and the others at a rural Kinrosha, I mean, Galilean wedding. They saw the glory of the bridegroom. So did 3,000 who came to faith on that day of Pentecost. Life could never be the same again. Everything else is a footnote, don't you think? Amen. We now bring to God our prayers for others. Uh, today in particular we wish to give thanks for the work of the Church's Society, Religion and Technology Project, the SRT as it's uh, widely known, and to, and to pray for this work. The SRT is 50 years old this month, and uh, over the last half century uh, it has provided biblical and ethical reflection and Council of the highest quality on many of the difficult issues thrown up by the advances in science and technology in our time. The current COVID-19 crisis has demonstrated how important the work of the SRT continues to be and we wish them every blessing as they continue to serve the church in this important way. In the prayer we can join together in the refrain, Come Holy Spirit, Let's pray together. Come Holy Spirit of God, restless breath of love, breathe on us now and help us to pray as we ought. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit to your world today as you brought order out of chaos at the beginning. Brood over the chaos of today's world so that people everywhere may learn the way of life as you intend and find purpose and meaning and hope in their existence. Where there is oppression and abuse of others, bring your justice. Where there is loneliness, grief, fear, bring your comfort. In illness, grant healing. And to those who care for the sick and dying, give strength and courage. Where there is anxiety and fear, bring your peace. Where there is hatred and division, bring your love. Where the resources of this amazing world are exploited and we fail in our calling as trustees of land and sea, grant us repentance and the grace to learn a better way. Guide the rulers of the world in ways of justice and integrity, of truth and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, to your church today. Breathe into us new life and zeal and delight in the gospel. Set our hearts on fire with your love. Grow your own fruit in our lives. As you accomplished that Pentecost day in Jerusalem, in all our diversity, make us one in truth and love. 
Let the gifts of all be valued and used for the common good in these times of such tremendous need. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Eternal God, we pray for all who work, for the increase of human knowledge, remembering those involved in the great enterprise of science and technology. Grant wisdom both in its research and use. Guide all those who are laboring so hard at this time to develop treatments and a vaccine for COVID-19. And we thank you for the contribution of the SRT. And as we look back in gratitude for 50 years of extraordinary service, so we pray for those who continue to lead this specialized and vital work. May they know your wisdom, strength and guidance as they encourage us all to be salt and light in these challenging times. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Empower and equip us to bear compelling witness to Jesus' Lordship by the way we live and speak and serve. Make us unafraid to stand out from the crowd and let it be seen that we have been with Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, to those who lead our common life. Bless our gracious Queen. Grant wisdom to those who serve in government and in positions of political leadership in our land and in all nations. And as they face difficult dis decisions in these times, may a spirit of hostility and blame give way to one of calm reflection and concerted endeavour towards ends that will promote the good of all. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, and do a new work in this land and in all the world. Revive us and equip us for those tasks to which your people in every age and place are called. Sweep through your church with new life, new hope, new vision to seize the new opportunities of these changing times. May we act ever more closely together with all your people in the rich diversity of the one body of Christ in whose name we pray together now, in the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Well, I'm delighted you've been able to join us in worship, wherever it is that you are today. Um, I do hope all is going well for you and yours, and that your practical needs are being fully met. Here in our parish, one of the pleasures of this period has been to witness the care and the kindness towards others that's evident all around. Uh, many are going an extra mile in looking after the needs of those who are most vulnerable. And as a community, we really are looking after each other. Some of this has been channeled through um, the work of Kinross Kindness, which came to birth just as COVID-19 and lockdown started and came to birth with a view to helping those in our community most affected by the crisis. And you'll find on our church website a fuller description of the service that Kinross Kindness is providing through its 85 plus volunteers with representation from our own congregation. And uh, I commend that to you. They deserve our wholehearted support and our gratitude. As does Broke Not Broken in me meeting the needs of folk who are facing real hardship. Kaith, our youth work, has also been on full stretch, working with our young people 
and uh, I hope to have an update from Barry uh, in the course of next week, which I will share with you. Let's hold all who serve our community in these and other ways in our prayers in these times. So I trust you have a good week, and uh, I hope we'll meet again soon. We sing, Holy is the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord the joy of the rushing wind. May the love of God create in you new life. May the power of God transform old ways into new hope. May the Spirit of God grant you wisdom and vision, emboldening you to proclaim the good news of God's love to all. Grobyanach and cheer na ulachuachi, byanach kamahar agis avich, agis an spirit naiv. Malyadev Anish Agus Kushiri. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>